let k equal six so that f of x is equal to one over x squared minus six x. Find the partial fraction decomposition for the function f. Find the integral of f of x dx. And so let's first think about the partial fraction decomposition for the function f. So f of x, I could rewrite it where I factor the denominator. If I factor out an x, I get x times x minus six. And so I can rewrite this as, and this is where I'm going to decompose it into partial fractions, a over a over x plus b, b over x minus six. And if I actually had to add these two, I would try to find a common denominator, and the, the best common denominator is just take the product of these two expressions. So I could multiply the numerator and the denominator of this first term by x minus six x minus six, and then the numerator and the denominator of the second term, I can multiply it by the denominator of the other one. So times x and times x. And so that would give us, let's see, if I distribute the a, it would give us ax minus six a plus bx plus bx over, over x times x minus six x times x minus six. If this looks completely foreign to you, I encourage you to watch the videos on Khan Academy on partial frac fraction decomposition. All right, so let's see if we can, so what we wanna do is we wanna solve for the a's and we wanna solve for the a's and the b's. And so let's see, if we see that these have to add up to one over x times x minus six. So these have to add up, I'm just going back to this. These have to add up the numerator. So it has to add up to one over x times x minus six. And so this numerator has to add up to one. So what we can see is, is that the x terms right over here must cancel out since we have no x terms here. So we have ax plus bx must be equal to zero. Or you could say, well, that means that a plus b is equal to zero. So we took care of that term and that term. And then we know that this must be the constant term that adds up to one, or that is equal to one. And so we also know that negative six a is equal to one, or a is equal to, divide both sides by negative six, negative one sixth. And then if a is negative one sixth, well b is going to be the negative of that. We have negative one sixth plus b, I'm just substituting a back into that equation need to be equal to zero. And so add one sixth to both sides, you get b is equal to one sixth. So I can decompose f of x, I can decompose f of x as being equal to a over x, so that's negative one sixth over x. I just write it that way, I could write it as negative one over six x or something like that, but I'll just write it like this just to be clear that this was our a, plus b, which is one sixth over x minus six, over x minus six. So that right over there, that's the partial fraction decomposition for our function f. And if I want to evaluate the integral, so the integral of f of x, the indefinite integral, well that's where this partial fraction decomposition is going to be valuable. That's going to be the indefinite integral of negative one-sixth over x plus positive one-sixth over x minus six, and then we have dx. Well, what's the antiderivative of this right over here? Well, the antiderivative of one over x is a natural log of the absolute value of x. And so we can just say this is going to be negative one-sixth times the natural log of the absolute value of x. That's the antiderivative of this part. And then plus one-sixth plus one six, you could do u substitution, but you could just say, hey look, the derivative of this bottom part, x minus six, that's just one. And so you could say that, okay, I have that derivative laying around, and so this is, so I can just take the antiderivative with respect to that. And so that's gonna be one six times the natural log of the absolute value of x minus six, and then I have, and then I have plus c. Don't forget, this is an indefinite integral over here, and then you're done. And you see that that partial fraction decomposition was actually quite useful. So they were helping us how to figure out how to figure out this. You didn't just have to have that insight. They're like, okay, how do I evaluate this antiderivative? Well, they're telling us to use partial fraction decomposition.